Spiky bits. Hey guys, MBG here again. Uh, to kind of go over some of the differences in uh, the new Tau Codex, um, some interesting idiosyncrasies as well as some, maybe some general um, strategies for them. Uh, first off, if you haven't heard, there's an FAQ out already that, uh, in fact, the uh, missile pods, uh, they can only be taken by broadsides, which is still kind of ridiculous because if you, let's see, if you take, what do you got, the high yield uh, broadside, you can switch for the uh, the uh, the hammerhead gun, so that's uh, four shots, and then you have the twin linked, which is two shots, so then you're up to six shots, and then you can take two missile drones as well, two more shots. So you can get ten shots at strength seven out of just one broadside, and you can take them in squads of three and do the same thing. So that's kind of ridiculous, like if you think about it. If I just did that math right. 30 shots at 30 shots with three broadsides if you just take the missiles uh, the missiles themselves now granted the range isn't quite as good as it used to be I think it's 36 but they're all indirect fire so that's really good let's see now it's uh, seven shots the high yield is four I think I did that math right I might be off by two on each but either way it's 30 plus 30 plus missile shots per broadside um, most of them are twin linked, so that's uh, that's pretty good. Um, so you can kind of see why they restricted the missile pods themselves, because you could take them on fire wars, you could take them on pathfinders, you could take them on normal crisis suits. So you basically just stand back and just blast away with missiles. It's it was kind of uh, a lot of people caught on to that with the leaks, and they're like <laughs> definitely talking it up. So uh, I'm kind of glad they, uh, they they cleared that up. Uh, pathfinders super useful. They've uh, they've really come a, come a long way to what they used to be. Um, they have some new drones which you, you can purchase uh, all for the all for them. Uh, there's a gravity inhibitor which basically deflects or tries to deflect assaults by D3 inches. Which you know if you keep your pathfinders in cover, that's super helpful. Uh, pulse acceleration uh, drone which basically gives you an extra six inches to your pulse uh, carbines, uh, getting them up to 24. Uh, recon drone. Which is kind of useful. It's got a burst cannon, uh, and then if you put it in a transport, it gets a homey beacon and positional relay, depending on how you're trying to play your tile, like dropping them in or whatever. Uh, it could be useful. Uh, battle suits, uh, a little bit different. Change to the crisis suits. Uh, they automatically come with black sun filter and multi tracker included in their points cost, which is going to make night fight uh, <laughs> very interesting against Tau if uh, they're crisis heavy. Uh, you can take three items. Uh, which includes both the ranged and support system. So you could theoretically take two guns and a support system, or one gun and two support systems, just kind of how you want to do it. Uh, it really just depends. Uh, each battle suit can always get two drones as well. Uh, I think they can only take gun and marker now uh, after the uh, FAQ. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, bodyguards and uh, Shaz Ver, which is basically like their sergeants, can get a signature item as well. And I believe the commanders can get four. I uh, have four points, so you could get uh, four ranged weapons, or you know, a combination of signature system. Well, one signature system, and then a, a normal support system. Uh, marker lights. I think we covered that. There. Well, no, I guess we didn't. Pathfinders obviously come with marker lights. They're 36 inches now, which I think is super useful. Um, they can't be used by the shooting the squad that shoots them because you actually rolled a, rolled a hit, and then you know the marker light token is put on there. So the squad that actually marker lights something cannot use it. However, other squads can do it, um, unless the networked uh, that the exception is of course the networked marker light. It never fails. If somebody always calls while I'm trying to do these videos, it's like Saturday morning. I, I don't even think we're open yet. Oh well, I apologize whoever that is, I am not answering the phone. <laughs> um, so the network marker light can be used as soon as it is, uh, as soon as it, the target is painted, uh, which is, you know, pretty useful. And the marker lights themselves, uh, pretty much, you know, standard the way they used to work, they can boost ballistic skill. Uh, now they can just straight up take away ignore cover, which is really good, but it takes two marker light tokens to do it. Uh, or launch a seeker missile, but you have to actually have the seeker missile. Uh, secret missiles are AP3 now, so they're not, 
super ridiculous because obviously you could just be dropping them on tournaments and stuff. But they're still pretty respectable at strength 8 AP3. Uh, let's see what else. Ions. Oh, there's a whole new type of uh, whole new type of weapon system uh, called ion, which actually gets hot now because you know the plasma fatale doesn't normally get hot, but ion ion weapons get hot, and they have two modes of fire, uh, which is uh, quote unquote overcharge, which is very interesting. Um, the pathfinders can actually take ion rifles, uh, which are strength seven AP four, or you can quote unquote overcharge them where they become strength 8 AP4 uh, blast but it gets hot so um, actually the interceptor drones for the bomber have that as well and they're twin links so very interesting uh, I guess you won't overheat very much on them if they're twin link so cool stuff there other other notable weapon uh, I guess differences is the fusion blaster is now 18 inches which is really cool because it lets you stand off a little bit more uh, than have to you know kind of get within 12 uh, burst cannons are now four shots. Very interesting. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, the systems. Some notable systems for the battle suit uh, support systems are velocity tracker, which can give them sky fire, advanced targeting system, which on a five or six gets you a precision precision shot if you're an independent character, or on a six if you're a non-independent character. So that. Uh, if you couple that with uh, ethereal ability, which lets you uh, snap fire after you run, you could theoretically run a crisis suit team to get into a better position to quite possibly either pick on a unit uh, and do wounds from a certain direction, or just straight up blast them and try to get some, you know, try to get some uh, preci precision shots. Maybe take out rag grenades or something on a tech marine. Uh, you know, for or not rag grenades, uh, psychotrope grenades, uh, tech marine for uh, a paladin squad, something like that. Uh, they also have early early warning override, which basically automatically uh, warms up the targeting sensors on the crisis suits, and it gives them the interceptor rule, which which is pretty good. Um, obviously, <laughs> um, flyers and deep strikers are going to have a hard time against a well equipped Tau army. Uh, abilities wise, you got warlord traits, which you can also, you know, we kind of covered in the uh, codex review. But the warlord traits, they got their own trait chart. Uh, you can also pick from the rulebook. Uh, bonding knives, unmodified leadership always, not just stubborn in combat. Uh, and support fire, any squad within six inches of a squad that's that's getting charged can choose to overwatch, but you can still only overwatch fire once. And there's actually a vehicle upgrade that lets you do that as well. So if you charge somebody next to a hammerhead. Theoretically, that has the, uh, I believe it's a point defense system, then it can shoot all its weapons at, at you as well. So, I think definitely a lot to think about before you try to close with Tau. However, I don't really see a lot uh, that, that prevents you from closing with Tau, if you know what I mean. So, I think Tau are definitely going to benefit from, from a lot of allies uh, either throwing, you know, some, some sort of tar pit units up front. Or, you know, maybe orcs, maybe, I think they can even ally with chaos, so maybe, maybe some zombies or something. Maybe Farsight, the Farsight Enclave is all crazy and they went to chaos, who knows. You could, you could theme it up. Uh, vehicle systems, uh, advanced targeting, same thing. A vehicle could get precision shot on a 6, which could be pretty good depending if it's strength 8, you know. But it could do some damage there on your HQs or whatever, or your squad upgrades. Uh, the flechette launcher. Uh, strength four hits against it inflicted against, and the number of which is inflicted against uh, model, enemy models in base to base. Disruption pod gives plus one cover now, uh, not automatically obscured. And decoy launchers give you a plus one vulnerable against anything using the interceptor rule to shoot them. Uh, very very similar vehicle systems to what we're used to, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, some of the notable signature systems. There's a whole page of them. I'm not really going to get into all of them. There's just a couple that really that really caught my eye. Uh, there's two different types of nodes. I forget exactly the names of each one, but one lets you reroll ones, and uh, one lets you just ignore cover uh, ones to hit, of course. Which I'm not really sure that's that great because a lot of your stuff's going to be twin length. But the ignore cover one definitely uh, without marker lights definitely uh, might be worth taking. Uh, there's also one that lets you target an enemy unit within 12 inches and all their weapons uh, have the get hot rule. 
There's a Commander Pure Tide uh, engram chip, which is basically imprint, imprinted into the, uh, the Tau pilot and lets him choose from all sorts of special abilities. Um, I think it's cool, but I I'm not sure if some of the abilities are that useful. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's see. Battlesuit upgrade. Oh, there's a Battlesuit upgrade. The Iridium armor. They brought that back. Uh, plus one toughness. Two up save. Which is kind of cool, but you can only take one per army. So, probably put it on your commander if it's points effective for you. Let's see. The sniper drones now have a 48 inch range uh, with their sniper rifles. Um, which is kind of cool because everybody kind of overlooked... Everybody's talking online. I feel like this, the sniper drone teams and the uh, the stealth suit teams kind of got overlooked some. So it's good to see them getting some cool things. And I actually, the stealth teams now, um, you know, being shrouded and stealth, and the fact that fusion blasters at 18 inches are actually a force to be reckoned with, in my opinion. Um, so you just got to keep an eye on them. Uh, we talked about broadsides in there. <laughs> Amazing amount of firepower they can put out at 36 inches if they choose to take all the missiles. Uh, a couple new things in this book, obviously two different flyers. Uh, the bomber has a strength five bomb that pretty much you know it has no. It, it, you always have it, but after you use it, you roll a dice, and you know if you roll badly, you don't get it again. The fighter has a quad ion cannon. Uh, now being ion, it has the overcharge ability, so it can either be fired in two modes: uh, strength seven or strength eight. Large blast gets hot. Uh, it's kind of interesting because the way I us see if we can find a picture of it. Kind of the way it's uh, it is uh, the actual model is. Let's see where's the where's the paint section. The actual way the model sits, it's very weird because here it is. Okay, so obviously you can't get a line of sight straight ahead so you're gonna have to kinda either shoot out left or right or underneath or fly over or, I don't know it's just it's just kinda weird um, I mean it's groundbreaking and cool looking but gameplay wise I'm not really sure what's going on there but anyways that's what we got uh, the bomber like like I was saying before has the interceptor drones let's see if we get a picture of that they're pretty cool because they have I don't really show them they're pretty cool because they have the ion uh, the ion rifle, uh, which two modes of fire, strength seven or strength eight, they move. They can actually deploy as you're as you're zooming by. They can jump off and deploy. Obviously, they can't get back on. Uh, they can turbo like jet bikes in the movement phase, or excuse me, in the shooting phase. Uh, twin length, pretty good guns. So, you know, they they might be worth taking. They might do more damage than the strength five bomb, in my opinion. Um, that's pretty much it for flyers that I noticed. Uh, Ethereals have some pretty cool abilities. 12-inch uh, leadership bubble at leadership 10, which, you know, unless you upgrade your squads, they're going to be leadership 8. Uh, so that's kind of average. Uh, they got an invocation of the elements, which gives special abilities to uh, any squad within 12 inches as well. You can only do one per turn. Uh, one of them makes them stubborn. One of them makes some pulse rifles get an extra shot. No matter, but you can only do it once. You, even if you have two ethereals, it only confers one extra shot. One gives feeling of pain, and one gives snap fire after running. The one I was talking about earlier that might uh, might help you get some some uh, side shots on units and uh, pick out some targets that uh, your enemy might have thought were quote unquote safe from fire. So that's uh, that's kind of how kind of the new stuff and kind of some different things there to think about um, as a general strategy. Not really sure what to make about all this. Obviously, broadsides are strong. Uh, the hammerheads are good. Uh, if you take a Skyray, there's basically flyers are are uh, not going to be a problem for Tau at all. Even if you just take a couple average pieces of equipment or vehicles, so it's very interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see if that changes the meta at all uh, with everybody taking the Heldrake uh, because the Heldrake will get shot out of the sky. Uh, by the by the Tau. So we'll just see how prevalent the Tau become. And uh, I think there's definitely some abuses uh, with Commander Farsight and his bodyguard if you can get some psychic powers on them. Like if you can start getting uh, shoot, um, four up and vulnerable, which they wouldn't even have to take their shields. You know, if you can get some divination powers on them, or even some biomancy stuff on them, uh, which I guess you'd have to ally with chaos to do. But I see that squad being super abusive walking across the table. 
or even maybe Eldrad, put put an Eldrad in there with them instead of Wraith Guard. That could even be uh, could even be a little a little ridiculous. So we'll kind of see how it goes. I mean, there's going to be all sorts of th theories and different things out there. Uh, this book came out too late to actually make, uh, affect the Depticon. So I guess the next major tournament that we're going to see a lot of Tau at is probably going to be War Games Con. So we'll see how that shakes out then. Anyways, that's my uh, my general differences in uh, tactics. Uh, I don't know, just rambling about the new uh, Tally Empire book. Um, so, uh, thanks for listening. I'm MBG Rob Bear. Hope you enjoyed my video. Spiky bits.